All right, welcome. These are the lecture notes on super harmonic motion. Okay, this is a tutorial. So here, the orange ball in the upper left corner of the situation is attached to the right end of a spring that has its left end attached to a fixed wall. The ball is pulled to the right. And you're going to sort of see here that it will undergo a full oscillation called simple harmonic motion. You're going to define the right as the positive direction, the ball has initially a positive displacement. Then as it oscillates, it's going to have the force of the spring will have an initial acceleration to the left. So you will say that it's accelerating to the left. You can see here that the simple harmonic motion can actually trace a full circular motion. So the oscillation from a ball on a spring can be traced exactly like this. So notice it is at the end, right here when the angle is equal to zero, this is when it's fully stretched. Right here when it reaches pi equals to when it re the angle equals to 90 degrees or pi half, this is when it's at equal equilibrium. When it is fully compressed, it should be here. The, th the angle should be 100 degrees or just pi in radians. Notice it makes it goes half of the circle when it fully goes from compressed to stretch. And once it comes back to its initial position where it was stretched, it makes a full circle. All right. Notice the this is a position versus time graph of the simple harmonic motion from when it's at its maximum displacement to right here. It's going to start here. It's at its amplitude or maximum displacement. This is when it was pi equals to 2 or 9 degrees. This is when it will touch here at 0 because it's at equilibrium. It reaches the bottom here, or we call that the trough of the wave, when it is fully compressed. And again, this is negative because we define left as negative. So it goes there, fully compressed. Now it comes back up. Then it fully goes back to stretch. All right. So this is a complete wave. This time that it takes is going to be defined by this idea called the period. So the position of the wave can be defined as A, which is the amplitude, cosine, which is this description of the wave, omega times T. Okay, this is one complete cycle of the wave. Notice this is one complete cycle of the wave, one complete revolution of the circle. One complete cycle, one complete revolution is given as this idea called the period, and we use that as t. That can be t equals to 2 pi over omega. Watch as I increase the acceleration. Notice what happens to the period. It gets smaller and smaller. Let's run it now with a very fast angular velocity. You would say that it completes the cycle, the revolution, quicker. Why? Because there's more angular velocity. Right? So now if you look at its velocity, okay? Notice it's going to trace a this equation, negative a omega sine omega t. This behaves like a sine graph. Now, if you trace out the acceleration, it looks like this. Okay. Notice it's always pointing inwards. Why? Because of centripetal acceleration. So it says it right here. To see the horizontal component of the acceleration of the object in uniform circular motion relates to acceleration of the object in superharmonic motion. Right? 
and it's always pointing inwards. Notice if you know some calculus here, you could see that the position, velocity, and the acceleration are all related by the first derivative. So the slope of the position at any point is equal to the velocity at that position, and the slope of the velocity graph will show you any point is equal to that acceleration at that point. These are all shifts from each other. So if you scoot the green one to the left by 90 degrees, you get a you get velocity. And if you scoot velocity um, a little bit more, 90 degrees, you get the angular acceleration. You get the acceleration. Okay. Let's run it. All right. Now here. They start off with the equation for simple harmonic motion. They use Newton's second law. They set it equal to each other. They do some rearrangement to basically solve for angular um, acceleration, angular velocity here, omega. Omega equals to the square root k over m. Omega only depends on the spring constant and the mass. Okay. Now, you can actually solve for the period if you would like. The period is again how long it takes to do one complete revolution that only depends on the mass and the spring constant nothing else okay there you go those are everything that you need to know about the simple harmonic motion we start from hooke's law and we got the rest from there